Um, well, uh, th thank, thank all of you for being here today. Um, this is actually one of the first experiences I've had where I can see the audience. I'm usually in uh, pitch dark spaces trying to avoid the projector beam. Uh, it's actually kind of amazing because everyone is quite beautiful this afternoon. Uh, if I had a recommendation, make a selfie before you leave and uh, post it to your sh social media account. Uh, it's great light here and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's extraordinary. Um, let me find the right... I think I left it back here. No, wait a second. Ta-da. Uh, so, so uh, what I would like to start with today, actu actually, um, uh, just to sort of go back, and over the last, uh, say, year and a half, uh, our firm, Easton & Combs, have started started really focusing on residential uh, design. And that's been a little bit of a challenge and a little bit of a gift for us because um, working in other scales up to this point, we, we, we've actually uh, not been sort of, I would say, sort of beaten down by the realities of residential design. And moving over into that, and especially, I would say, uh, looking at the North American market and trying to kind of educate the client base there on uh, new and emerging methodologies, which many, uh, many of you know in Europe, obviously, because of uh, the energy codes and the building regulations, uh, it's, it's been an interesting process for us to really frame and both kind of educate ourselves and also educate a larger audience. Uh, there are two slides that I want to start with, uh, just as kind of reference points, things that have been, uh, have been with us for quite some time. Uh, many of you probably know uh, um, Alvar Alto's work. You're probably very familiar with, um, or you may know the uh, Alborg Museum of Modern Art. Uh, this skylight is a typical detail that Alto used, um, the integration of an artificial light uh, within the light well of the skylight. And, and uh, clearly and obviously, that makes a lot of sense in terms of the northern climate in the Scandinavian region. But he did also bring this detail to the United States. And the dormitory at MIT um, in Boston employs this very detail. And I think what's kind of interesting and what's really important and relevant about this is that uh, it's the convergence of a certain philosophy, a kind of position and an attitude about natural light and artificial light, about architecture having a connection to the environment, uh, to nature, not re really uh, thinking about uh, architecture as an inside and nature as an outside. And this is obviously is something that uh, he developed um, both from the cultures in the Scandinavian region and kind of, uh, kind of practiced that in his architecture. Um, but it's also practical in, in, in uh, both in Scandinavia, obviously, and also, and also in, uh, in North America. Um, another image, kind of point of reference, and many of you know this, uh, well, most of you know this as well, uh, Sir John Zone's house at uh, Lincoln's Inn Fields uh, here in London. Um, I visited this uh, project, I, I guess, maybe 25, 30 years ago, I don't remember, as a young kid. And um, it was amazed. I was amazed, and it haunted me for many, many years as a as an architect, growing up and kind of maturing and thinking about uh, thinking about these spaces and the relationship of natural light. Obviously, um, there's a philosophical idea here. There's an interest in na uh, natural light and the rendering of um, of Johnson's uh, collection that he acquired from all over uh, the, the world. On Another uh, point, it's also a very, very practical way to think about getting natural light into this pseudo-subterranean condition uh, of a backlot building in, uh, in London. So I, th I think it, it, as well, he had, one could even say he had no, no other choice that the, 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 uh, the soot burning off of the oil lamps would have destroyed the, the sculpture. So I'm really actually very interested as an architect, as a practicing architect, in, in the convergence of these ideas, these, let's say, kind of philosoph philosophical positions, or let's say even emotional kind of ideas, psychological ideas, and also the kind of practicalities of what it means to uh, translate those in architectural terms. So given those two kind of reference points, um, 
I want to share with you today three uh, sort of uh, three houses that we are working on, kind of residential scale um, houses that we're working on. Uh, we're, we're currently located in New York City and also in western Massachusetts, a very beautiful area uh, in the northeast United States that shares a lot of kind of climate issues uh, with northern Europe. It, it, it's, it's similar in some ways and more extreme in others. Um, but in these three, in these three projects, uh, we, given that we had a kind of chance to sort of rethink what it meant to, um, how should I say, uh, develop a position for uh, residential space to think about that kind of life. Um, all three of these projects represents kind of, kind of provocations or examinations of what that could be. So the first project actually is, um, uh, I generically title these from one day to the next at house one, two, or three, I don't know. Uh, I like untitled house. But in this one, uh, we... We set out to do two things, and the, the wall system, we're, we're developing a wall system using some 3D print technology to uh, get a structural wall system that's both laterally, um, la laterally strong and also, uh, also able to carry uh, vertical weights and address, um, it would see, natural light, porosity. And that's an aspect of the project that I won't go um, terribly far into. We're in a kind of second version of that right now, and we are seeking funding on that. So I'd love to be able to share that as that uh, piece of the research matures. But in this uh, particular plan arrangement, <clears throat> we sort of thought about this idea of really, br like quite literally bringing the outside in. Uh, like, why not? Like, quite literally do that. Uh, the idea of the courtyard, the, the idea of the impluvium from the Roman house is a sort of typology, sort of reconsidered in 21st century um, uh, notions or language. So uh, here you have on the right-hand side uh, three, uh, three kind of very intimate kind of courtyard conditions, one serving the kind of living space, the other two serving the, se the, the master bedroom and the secondary and tertiary spaces. They're all connected to, uh, programmatically, to aspects of water. Uh, so the bedroom courtyards are uh, connected to uh, the kind of bathrooms that are associated with those, the, the bathing spaces that are associated with those. And of course, in the living, that's associated with the kitchen. So it's sort of a, a, adjacent to that. Uh, so this diagram, uh, the kind of working plan uh, uh, on the uh, right-hand side, you see the presence that those, uh, that those um, courtyards have, and they're open air, they have windows onto them, and obviously connection to them, so you can occupy them, or one could occupy them in uh, very different ways. But the, the basic core idea is that this notion of the nature of the outside, like quite literally the outside, is sort of brought in and reorganizes the way that one thinks about uh, the house, one thinks about domesticity. Um, and this is just a detail of that. And there are several images that I'll go through quickly. Uh, you start to see some, uh, some potential of what this means in terms of the kind of ambient light, the, the indirect light that's brought into the space. So as one would think about the organization of, let's say, a main living space, you would have this uh, almost kind of fluid connection to uh, the condition of uh, daylight and of the outside. Uh, here view kind of a model view from a kitchen uh, scenario. And finally, another view. And uh, this is house number two. This house, actually, um, a version of this has been developed over the last year, both as a kind of prototype and one, uh, an iteration of this will get built. Uh, there is a piece of property also in uh, western, western Massachusetts, in the Berkshires, that uh, has an existing house on it that will be uh, taken away. And we decided to work with the client to really uh, sort of educate them, to kind of learn with them what it meant to uh, be environmentally, let's say, aware. But I would say larger than that, just to sort of build right so that all of the kind of pressures, uh, both in terms of uh, cost, in terms of how you think about energy usage, that it all finds a balance. 
And in this, this project, we try to take some of those ideas of the uh, interior, interiorization of the exterior light, of the outside light, and bring them into it. And uh, there's a diagram here that sort of uh, attempts to summarize. Of course, it's a super insulated wall system, achieving kind of R values of uh, 50, a U value of 0.02 or, or, or better. Uh, so for the United States, believe it or not, that's, that's kind of still radical <laughs> in some way. But uh, in, in, in that scenario, we also wanted to focus, focus the client on the use of natural ventilation as much as possible and natural light. Uh, so in the middle diagram you see here, you can actually see that kind of idea of cross ventilation becoming a kind of major uh, design uh, driver in, in a sense, and that uh, syncing up with this idea of uh, natural light through uh, roof lights, through skylights. Um, here, this is just to kind of just explain the the um, heat recovery system, and that's really another lecture, but uh, suffice it to say, there's, there's, um, there's a movement at the residential scale to sort of super insulate and to uh, make sure that the building envelope is, uh, is very high performing and well sealed. And unfortunately, in the kind of building science builder world, that tends to push people away from uh, thinking about natural light uh, as, as, a, as a major component of the, uh, of the design of the house. So, so we sort of try to find the balance with that and to work in terms of combining the idea of the integration of natural light and also ventilation, as you can see in the diagrams, uh, all through uh, this, this particular design. And just a few more images to kind of follow up on that. Um, for example, in the bedroom area, uh, in, as opposed to locating the uh, skylight in such a way that it becomes sort of too, too exciting, let's say, uh, is to kind of move it into the corner so it really is about striking the kind of wall, giving a kind of uh, light in the mid-afternoon and providing that, uh, providing that ventilation. And the light well from the stair and just a quick overview in terms of the plan. It's a very, very modest um, uh, plan, very, very super compact. And uh, the systems, this diagram shows the kind of systems, the integration of, uh, of the light wells, as well as the distribution uh, through the HRV system, uh, et cetera. And in, I would say in working through both of the, the ideas that uh, emerged in both of those projects, uh, there's a third project, a new house that um, we have just actually started in the last two months that uh, we've had the, I would say, the privilege of being able to really bring the client on board early and uh, talk to the client about the unique properties of the site, which are somewhat challenging, uh, at the same time to really introduce them to uh, these ideas of in the integration of uh, quite literally outside space, but to do it in a way that, um, that becomes a major kind of organizational feature of the house. So uh, very, very briefly, the house is sort of located more or less in a long dimension on the ridge of a mountain, on the ridge of a, of a kind of hill. So it's very difficult to, um, in, you know, rule number one is we're, we're going in very, very sensitively and not uh, altering the geography, the landscape um, at all. And you, what, what comes out of that is you, you're forced to work with the axes of the north and south, not exactly, but your, your predominant orientation is in that direction because of this uh, geographic feature. And in that sense, it became uh, really important for us to uh, think about ways of getting light from the southern uh, sky in the house and also opening up the views in the east and the west that would it generate an overall kind of comfortable atmosphere. So this is the orientation. So this is more or less the ridge that this is setting on. The view, the deck view is out to the east. It's very kind of um, beautiful kind of rural view. You can see the fall off uh, in kind of abstract model, pretty, pretty 
uh, immediately. And there's a view in. Uh, so there is this demand or this desire, let's say, to uh, have the main kind of body of the living space, have the kind of immediate connection to the outside. Um, and what we have uh, looked at is organizing, it, organizing in the kind of tight footprint, the kind of functions, the, the, again, the wet, the wet zones of the house, uh, the, the kind of interior functions of this in a way that relieves or relinquishes the, the, the out, those functions from the outside wall. So that allowed us to, in the center of this to do something very similar that, um, that was discussed in the first project, which is to really integrate this kind of exterior space inside. In this case, it has, at least in this iteration, uh, glass on three sides and a solid wall. And the solid wall is on the north side, so it's primarily there to catch as much of uh, reflection from the southern light and bring it into the space. So very kind of basic idea in terms of, in terms of doing that. Uh, this, again, is an early iteration that shows a kind of time of day, uh, a march through the time of day, and you can get a sense of uh, how the daylight would be sort of completely incorporated within the main living space, but it's not about a kind of direct light. It's about an indirect light. And um, so that's really an overview of sort of where we are. Uh, it's a real pleasure to kind of be here and to kind of share that with everyone. Uh, so thank you very much.